Good afternoon, Scarlet the Teeth Live. Welcome to today's recap. So today you had a little bit of back and forth action. If you had the TV on, everyone's worried about this 1% pulling we've had off the highs in the S&P after an almost 30% run in 2013 after a 10 day ramp up into the end of the year. And at this point, I think, you know, it's acting somewhat healthy. Most major world indices that closed on the dead highs have also experienced some profit taking some people who didn't want to book any taxes in the last few months are booking some gains to feel good so they don't have to worry about taxes for next year. And you really don't have to worry about things unless it trades or pertains to your time frame. And everyone's time frame is different. If you look at the chart of the SPX right here, look at all these different time frames. If you're a macro investor, you know, and you trade from a long-term time frame, <laughs> look at this trend line. You don't even have to, you know, you don't even have to watch the market. I would go back to the chart. If you, you know, trade as per a little bit more intermediate, and this one is not even that, that's the low from November, this trend that held all of last year, this still comes up into about 1790. But if you trade on a more accelerated basis for cash flow and tactically, which a lot of us do, you know, and you don't like to look at a negative P&L, first things first, this was the start of the year. This is when we, you know, engulfed these last four days to the downside, and now we're trying to hang in there. So if you take even a closer look here, I've been trying to talk about, you know, how to navigate this, you know, as far as the market's concerned, here is your down day. You now have a few days of digestion below. So I would say it's not the greatest thing for the bulls that it hasn't been able to snap back yet. But at this point, made a quick new low, came back above it. The end of the day was a little wishy-washy. Still, you want to talk about a more accelerated trend line, this also being you know, one that traders follow. That's right around here. That's right around the prior high. That's right around 1817-ish or 1815-ish. You know, so with that being said, these are the first three days of the year. Not the end of the world, considering that this is the fourth trend okay above all these other trends so i just think the bulls are a little spoiled and with that said you know those are just that's just the s p if you were involved in five six seven eight nine stocks while the indices pulled in you know some of them went up and didn't even care you didn't even have to worry about what the market was doing you were able to see the relative strength like we saw in the banks look at bank of america almost textbook type of move you know it was upgraded on like uh, this you know a few days back while the market was red closed strong through the prior highs and look at this three-day move some people were saying red dog are you worried about a doji today you can't go up at freaking 90 degrees for a while <laughs> so with that being said one two on the third day you trim some okay this was your you know this was your igniting bar this was your accumulate weight this was your ad for momentum here is your sell sum and if you had a little you know a little bit more than a tier maybe you sold some today and now you let it go sideways same things goes for most of these banks look at citigroup citigroup played a little catch up um, this was your inside range broke above now maybe you need to do some work above 53 before continuing but ultimately that looks good too as far as the banks so with that being said you could have been involved for a macro move in the banks and 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 uh, tactically right there and been fine so you, you come back to what's going on tech um, tech there's definitely a lot of different divergences there's not a lot of continuity um, today I came in and I was thinking maybe we could short Amazon Netflix because those two showed a little weakness and you could have in the first half an hour but if you stayed a little bit too long or pressed it at the lows you got frustrated which is what happened a lot during last year so you go to Amazon first Amazon um, I actually made some money short look at that first time in a while you know and that was because you had a top and tail here so as it went negative I think I was shorting somewhere around 395 and I, I figured I'll cover in front of the 21 day the stock hasn't broken and closed below the 21 day in multiple months so why would it do it this time and who am I to press it there so anyway you know you had a topping tail now a bottom tail it probably needs a little bit more time here's your new point of reference ultimately that was a nice tactical trade same thing goes for Netflix another nice tactical trade today I did not take it but some people did here's your trend line that got broken right there hovered below some people went it went from positive to negative that was a short signal went below this on the price point sheet which is 359 and then what did it do tested the 50 day or almost did and then came off it so there was your tactical trade there if you're staying with it longer you probably have a thesis if you were looking tactically that was that same thing goes for apple 
Apple, you know, you had the China Mobile deal uh, a week or so ago. We talked about the gap. If you were trading it really tight, you traded a verse that 562, if you use that as a stop, okay. If you didn't, you had 551 as a stop. If you got stopped out, you missed the, the carnage of Friday, which was another 10 points. And then today, you came in flat. I came in flat Apple today down five bucks. It wasn't scary. It was okay. Let's see what type of move we have in Apple. So if you look at the chart of Apple, you will see, you know, this is the line that I drew um, this morning. I'm like, look at this, um, you know, 50 day moving average. Look at the prior low, 540.43. Some people started buying it a little bit earlier once it made the 30 minute low. You know, it actually came right into this prior low here, which was 533. What was the low here today? What a quinky dink, almost 533. Didn't quite get to 528. And then it kind of built. And you could have waited for it to come back above, okay, the prior low for your red dog reversal, or you could have bought a little bit versus the low and watched it build. You know, it came a little bit off the highs, but I think, I think it's got some room back to at least where the moving averages are curling down. We'll see what happens here. Maybe, you know, this is going to be a, a consolidation range trade for a while until we get closer to earnings. Here's the top end of the range, and here's the bottom. If you got stopped out here at that gap that I was talking to you about, you had the potential to buy it back here, and now we'll see if we get uh, another day there. Ultimately, this trend from the lows of, uh, you know, of the summer is still intact. It's just you know, getting a little wishy-washy, which a lot of the things have been going that way throughout the course of um, 2014. So with that being said, we also didn't know what to expect from Facebook. Facebook and Twitter today, who knew? Um, Facebook started out a little weaker or, or, or whatnot, then it did a little red dog reversal, showed some power. If you're a member of the VTF, you would have heard Sperlin talk about it, you would have saw me that came in flat Facebook, get long it, and I think he could have made 3-4% in it, just in a day trade and who knows, maybe there's more there. You look at Facebook, the gift that keeps on giving, it's got a friend in me, <laughs> you know, that was that gap from two quarters ago, here was your trend to the upside, corrected, broke that trend and since then, you know, it's been nice movement. Today, it broke above this mini range. Okay, you take a look over here. And, uh, you know, you have two different buy signals. One, when it went back above this 54.53, which I actually missed, I bought a little bit closer to 55 when it, you know, when it reclaimed the eight day and then look at this power. Okay, and if you were short, you probably should have said, you know what, I have to cover if it starts getting into this wide range bar because it's negating the power of this move. So now with that being said, Big time move today. Hopefully we get a little follow through. I'm still long a little bit. If it you know, has a few inside days, that would make sense too, considering the size of this move. Four and a half percent or so is a lot. Twitter was downgraded by Morgan. Um, ultimately, I would say not the end of the world. I drew this pattern thinking maybe that we get some kind of wedge type pattern. Um, and it did open below the eight day, but what did it do? It reclaimed it. And it looks okay still. Okay, we'll see maybe uh, inside day or so as it comes into an apex and then we'll figure out if it resolves to the upside or to the downside. We'll wait and see there. It's setting up. Tesla was pretty weak. You know, I talked about this minor wedge right here. Said if it breaks above 152-ish, it could be to the upside. Below, maybe to the downside. Kind of was weak, but didn't do too much uh, damage here. It's still trying to hold in there. It just was out of play. Solar City, I would say, is a little frustrating. Um, it's actually closed okay. I know some guys, you know, bought it a little bit, you know, closer to 65, but ultimately, you know, I think I started talking about it here with uh, Deborah from the street. Nice move. You could always trim and trail it. Uh, unfortunately, sometimes, you know, you get a gap up, so it takes a lot of it away. You get a gap up, look decent, and then just kind of dribbled lower for, for the majority of the day, which is not that easy to handle. You still got a big gap, though. FSLR was downgraded. Sometimes that happens. You know, a little bit of a surprise. Not much you could do about it. Um, you just had to pick and choose what you wanted to do. Some people ask me, what do I do here? I'm like, well, you know, if it tra you know, trades below this prior low of 54, I would just salvage it and try and get out of the way. You didn't have much time for that, and now it closed on the dead lows. So with that being said, um, is now, again, <laughs> it's, it's Goldman downgraded. It got downgraded by another guy, and it didn't give you much of a signal here. You know, it did have a wide range bar and held the top third. So if you had some trailing, that kind of thing happens, kind of like in blackjack. You know, sometimes you split and you don't get the cards you want or you get a, a six and a five versus six and you get a, a five and he has a four underneath and gets a face card. Broken pattern, broken patterns happen and you have to figure out what you want to do. What you don't want to do is be stubborn and hold and go out of your time frame and turn a loss into a huge debacle and into a head game. So hopefully you salvage a trade, moved on and you'll, you'll get them next time. As far as uh, gold, had a little bit of an intraday flash crash, um, but resumed 
um, and still looks like it's trying to get up to this 121.46 area. I'm avoiding it, or I'm trying to avoid it. Um, still, you have the, the bugs out there uh, pointing to this double bottom, you know, this major double bottom, which, yeah, technically, yes, that's the case, but I just think it's getting an oversold bounce, and, you know, we'll see what happens here. This will be a, an obstacle for it to get above, um, but I, I would just take it very slow here and, and really not even get involved too much there. Well, with that being said, today we came in with, you know, not a lot of A-plus ideas. I think if you bought Facebook, you were pleasantly surprised. If you played Apple from negative to positive, you were, neg you, were you know, did I say negatively? You were, you were pleasantly surprised. Uh, the banks, not much you could do on the third up day except for trim and trail. You know, hopefully not trim and trail yourself out of all your stock because even though it could digest a little bit, and it, it, it looks like it could go again. The S&P is trying to figure out where its pivot low is. Um, they tried to press the market through um, last week's pivot, and there was not much follow through to the downside. And then when it looked good, they dribbled lower. That's, you know, no, nothing you can do about that either, except for keep taking trades and not press lows and, you know, don't chase it at, you know, after a rally already. You hear Sperlin talk about that all the time. And the, 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 I think the market is just trying to figure out uh, what's next. A lot of people are worried about, oh, first three days down, what does that mean? I think at this point it doesn't mean much. You saw those different trend lines. There are four of them, and we've just slightly broken the upper, upper, upper one, which is really just navigated by super, you know, tactical day traders. Okay, if you're an investor, I don't think you have much to worry about. And even if we start retracing longer, I think it's going to be met with some buyers. You know, we've got to see what happens with China. China's been a little bit of the sore spot where it's below the 200-day. We'll see what happens with the FX side tomorrow. I have no position. You know, the last week of the year, I did have some calls on. Tried it for a long, didn't work. I thought it was risky, so I said, I'm going to buy some calls. Risk is premium paid. You know, you remember we sold a little bit. Look at the FXI. Somebody was asking me about it, so it was right here where, where I was buying it. Sold a third, okay, made some money, and then on this move, just got out of it and said, you know what, I'm wrong. You know, and now look where it is. It's well below the 200-day. So with that being said, um, I still, in my humble opinion, think that, if you want it to, over a long period of time, buy the FXI. It could be the whole year. Who knows? Um, you know, that's a long-term play because right now it's not showing you anything short-term tactically. You know, no red dog reversal, no reversal pattern. But longer term, I think if you want to put yourself in some China exposure, it was down last year. Maybe it takes a little bit more time. In the next, uh, not talk a few years from now, but a few years from now, it could be something good for your portfolio the same way those who accumulated, you know, things in Europe during, you know, two years ago during that whole, you know, financial crisis there that turned out to be nothing but, you know, a, a buying opportunity. So anyway, tactically, there's been a lot to do. Macro, we're down 1% after being up 30. I would say, again, not all in, not all out, not all situations have been created equal. This year, you're probably going to have to be a lot more active, a lot more tactical versus last year where you could have just bought, closed, you know, went on vacation, probably made more money than trying to be active and tactical. With that said, see you in the morning. Have a great night.